On today's episode, we're going to take a look at the Solval SV01. This is a $299 3D printer that shares a lot of components with the Creality machines, like what I have back here. In fact, they actually buy some of their components direct from Creality. And then they add upgrades to this machine that a lot of people were looking for in their Creality printers, including direct drive. But does it make it a better 3D printer than the Creality machines? Well, we're going to find out on today's Filament Friday. Filament Friday is brought to you by these Patreon supporters. Before I get into the details of where the upgrades are, let me first say that this is very similar in assembly to a CR10 or CR10 Mini in that the upper section is all assembled and the bottom section is mostly assembled. So really it's just four bolts to mount this top section to the bottom and then you have to mount the LCD and connect the wires and you're pretty much there. It's a real easy assembly. Now they do give you a really nice manual step by step, takes you through everything including some setup at the end of how to level your bed and get the software going. So they did a good job in explaining that and it did go together pretty easy. I really didn't have many issues at all. When I received the printer, I did not receive any source code. They were not releasing it. I explained to them, you're running Marlin, you need to release the source code. They agreed. So they're working on releasing that to the public and they did send me a copy of it that I can't share, but at least I could see what was in it. And it is indeed running Marlin 1.1.6. So I'm releasing this video with their promise that they're going to release the source code to the public and meet the Marlin requirements. Now, when I looked over the source code, I saw that they had thermal runaway protection enabled along with several of the features that are in the menu. So it told me they probably are running a higher memory board. Turns out that was the first upgrade. This definitely has a higher memory board than the Ender 3 or the CR10 Mini. In fact, they're buying the exact same board that's used in the CR10S. Now you could say that the SV01 is a CR10S Mini because it has a lot of the same features that the original CR10S had, such as filament runout sensor. It's got dual threaded rods, and this was the first CR10S was the first one to get dual threaded rods on any Creality machine. So they've copied that and they drive it from the same board. Now I took the threaded rod off of mine because I didn't like the way it was driven. Sometimes the motors would jump and I'd have the level thrown off. So I reduced down to a single threaded rod like a CR10. So it'll be interesting how well this one performs. This one has a glass bed just like the CR10S, only this one includes like an ultra base top. It's a clone. I ended up just flipping it over most of the time just using glue because I didn't find it worked that great. But they do include the glass bed which makes it much more level than say an Ender 3. Some people have complained that their, their bed's a little bit warped. I also found the performance with that glass bed is actually better than what I was getting in my CR10S. I'm not seeing any ringing, any ghosting. I'll show you that in the prints. The biggest difference then is really this direct drive. And I was kind of excited about it because I want to print the really flexible materials. Specifically, I like to try out the Ninja Flex. That's the real rubbery stuff. It's pretty difficult to print on most printers. Although I did use the Easy Arc extruder and get it to work on my Ender 3. I was curious how well it would print on this direct drive extruder. I'll show you how that turned out. This machine also has the orange springs that are underneath the bed, the same as the CR-10S. They're a little bit stronger than the ones that come on the Ender 3. So some people prefer that because it holds the bed a little better. I found if you get the adjustment in the middle of the spring, so you got tight adjustments either way, my bed really doesn't change much in the Ender 3, but that is an upgrade that this machine has. The other thing this has that the CR-10S doesn't have is integrated electronics built right into the bottom case. So it's an all-in-one printer. Everything comes with you versus a CR-10S where the box is totally separate. The electronics are here. It's a little harder to move around. So that's a nice feature. Now it does make the SD card a little harder to get to in the front, but the on-off switch is right here in the side versus in the back. I like that a lot better. The build area is 280 millimeters by 240 millimeters by 300 millimeters tall, which is very similar to a CR-10 Mini, just laid out slightly different. It's definitely bigger than an Ender 3. I laid my Ender 3 Pro magnetic bed on top of it here, and you can see you have a lot bigger build area on this printer. I took the cover off the bottom of the printer, and that exposed the electronics. It was like 12 screws to take off. You can see the circuit board, a blower or cooling fan, and then the power supply. When I focus on the board, you can see it's an actual Creality version 2.2. I'm pretty sure this is the one used in the CR-10S. And it's got a 18 mega 2560 
So it's the larger microcontroller with more I.O. and more memory. So 256K of space. Plenty of room for the full Marlin. Also included is a Meanwell power supply. 24 volts, 14.6 amps. So it's a decent power supply. I believe it's a similar one used in the Ender 3 Pro. They do include 200 grams of white PLA to print with. So it's nice. Pretty decent sized roll. And they only give you one sample file to print. So I used this in the first prints and you'll see it didn't turn out that great. The Z-Height switch is mounted separately. That comes separate. You mount with these two screws and tighten it up. And it is adjustable. You can move it up and down on the rail. And this is nice because you can get your bed leveled so the springs are pretty tight but in between movement. So I did adjust this before I leveled my bed. I leveled the bed and then I started printing the sample print. There's only one and it starts to print out a raft. And after it gets the raft down, it was pretty smooth. The raft went down good. It started to print a calibration cube. And I let this print until it was close to finished. And then it decided to cut the filament. But look at the light stayed on. It still thinks there's filament. So something was wrong in the sensor. It was stuck and it actually was because I went back and wiggled a piece of filament in it and then its light went off and it gave me a change filament error. So I let it finish printing and it did run out of film and I didn't, I cut it too uh, short. But it just didn't look that great. It was kind of rough and of course the top, like I said, it ran out of filament. But it just is not smooth for a first print, especially it's their sample print. So they sliced it. So I decided to print my calibration cube, the CHEP calibration cube, with that same filament that was included. And it just looks rough. And my CHEP pawn looks terrible. I tried printing a benchy, but it broke off the bed, and this is when I flipped the glass over and started using glue and glass. And then I just decided to use Atomic's uh, candy apple red filament, and it started printing a lot better. This was a lot better, although the chip pawn still didn't look great. It was better, but not great. The benchy looked better, but a lot of stringing. And I had retraction set way high. I used retraction settings for an under three. I should have had under extrusion. Not this. So here they are next to each other, and clearly under three prints were a lot better. I did try some PETG. I didn't see a major difference between the two. These are fan ducts I printed, so it did print that fine. One area I was really impressed on the CHEP cube, there's no ghosting, no vibration showing up on the y-axis. When you have a glass bed that's moving, you tend to get ghosting or ringing because of the weight moving back and forth. The one on the left is an under three. With a, without glass, the one on the right is under 3 with glass. So I'm getting ringing there. But look at the Solval SV01. It's a glass bed moving back and forth. No ringing, no ghosting. This is impressive. They got their acceleration and jerk settings just right. I just want to know what was inside this hot end because it wasn't performing as I expected. And it looked like an E3DV6 was inside when I took the side cover off. But when I took that out, I could see it had a gold base, which tip me off that there's something going on here and when I look closer you could see this is a Creality block, heat block, Creality nozzle. It's even got the two screw holes to go into a Creality heat sink. But the heat sink itself is an E3D style, nice and round so you can use the E3D fan. And then it's got this plastic piece on top that goes up between the gears but the bottom of it spreads out like an upside down funnel and that's where I had problems with flexible materials. You can see how much it could wiggle around. If there's any back pressure, it'll just curl up and go into that funnel and then block the filament. And that's exactly what it did. You can see on this piece of filament how it's got wavy lines. That was actually curled up filament inside that funnel and blocked it from printing. And it did this multiple times. So that's why I couldn't print the super flexible Ninja Flex on this machine. Overall, I think this is a very solid machine, a really nice build area. And a lot of nice features included for $299, including a bootloader so you can upgrade the memory if you're into that and you want to make this machine into what you want it to be. I think it's a great machine to work from. I just don't like the hot end. I'm really disappointed in that piece together. It seems like you know an E3D style heat sink and then the Ender 3 or just Creality heat block. They just don't seem to work together the way you'd expect. In that case, I would put an actual E3D V6 on this guy and then fix that, that funneled piece of plastic that doesn't allow me to you know, print the real flexible stuff. And then I think you got what could be a really, really good printer for still a relatively low cost. 
So that's the one area I would hope that Sol will improves because otherwise it's a pretty good machine.